there's nothing else to do with Field of Ruin, I might, have, might as well make a new character while I'm making this video. Anyway, as you look from the title, I'm going to be going over the OG moments that Destiny 1 players remember. And listen moments that are special to me at least, and I'm pretty sure a lot of people, people will find this special. I figured this was the best time to make this video, just because the game just dead right now. Uh, I'm not going to make this video special, it's going to be unprofessional. It's going to be me talking. It's going to be me and Clark now. Hey, hi Clark. Hi. We're just going to be going over things that we missed, whether there was a moment players had or something in the game that we loved or hated. Just something remarkable that happened within the first years of Destiny. Uh, Either PvE or PvP, this list will not be in any order whatsoever. Another thing I should mention is the Grimmar cards. I actually give a story. I actually used to read the Grimmar cards back in the day. A lot of people have already left. That's why I'm making this video, because it just felt like a good time and need to make it. Since I've moved on to other games, like especially Fortnite, which is a free game. It's making content updates, not charging anything, or there's no necessary to pay. But uh, anyway, uh, let's get on with this list. So uh, nothing special, just going to be mentioning it while I play. Cause I got a list, a list kind of spot. I mean, not like a script, but like, you know, just a list uh, of topics to go over. It's going to be unprofessional, so if you want professional stuff, you've come to the wrong place. At the end of the video, if you feel like I've missed some moments, be sure to let me know. And yeah, I'll favor them if I think it was worthy. Anyway, let's start this video. So this video is about Destiny moments where the veteran Destiny players will remember. Whether it was some moments players had or something in the game that we loved and hated. Just something remarkable that happened within the first year of Destiny, or even in Destiny in general, in either PvE or PvP. I don't think to mention that this list is in no order whatsoever, so don't criticize me, don't judge me. I'm just stating what I remember. Alright, so the first moment I had to put on was completing a raid or obtaining a first exotic for the first time. Doesn't really make sense, because I said first exotic, but uh, yeah. And even go flawless for the first time. Like, these moments, like... You can remember the first time you went flawless, like that moment was great. It actually felt like you just accomplished like the most greatest thing of all time. Came with the raid. I remember when I completed the raid I was carried by a few old friends that I don't really play with anymore. But yeah, I was I was pretty much carried. I was low level. Like that was a good moment to remember. In this game in this raid, I completed the raid until like later on, just because how glitchy it was to actually complete. Like even even completing Crota's end, like even though Crotizen wasn't the best raid, I actually liked it compared to this raid. Just because this raid, it was not actually rewarding. It's just a waste of time, I feel like. I did not enjoy this raid. Especially with all the glitches happening on Kallus. Not cool. Another moment is getting a specific exotic that you wanted. Not just first exotic. Uh, I remember my first exotic was Patience in Time that I got from Xur. That, was, that just felt really special to me. Like, you're going to remember those moments for a long time. I remember my first time when I got the Galahorn. You know, there was actually something you would want. In this game, there isn't a specific exotic that you would go crazy over. At least, I don't think there is. Maybe the Prometheus lens before it was nerfed. That would feel special, but now, the no exotic feels too special to the point where, like, I can get it anymore. Not only that, but I can barely get any of the exotic. None of the exotics drop for me. Uh, I don't really get exotic engrams. So it kind of brings down its uh, importance in the game. Because I, even when I get an exotic, it's just a duplicate. Uh, I remember the time when I got the Vex on my first hard mode raid. Uh, that was crazy. That's insane. Like, these moments are something to remember. Like, a lot of people remember when they got a certain weapon, the Vex. Like, oh, great weapon. Even when I got my last weapon, like, I, I needed Monte Carlo, which is probably one of my favorite exotics in the game to this day. So, hopefully, bring it back. That was the last exotic for armor and weapons that I needed to complete my collection. Another thing I want to mention, uh, just because it just came up to me, was uh, Rander the Vandal. You know, there's big events that happened, like something to remember. Rando the Vandal, if you don't know who that is. Just like a random enemy who spawns in Earth near the beach area. Forgotten Shore, I think that's what it's called. And yeah, he basically just has way too much health than he should. And he's like boss level health. It was kind of cool. It was kind of fun to like try to fight the guy. There is no, there's little to no secrets in the game that uh, you can find on your own. Like sure, there's like lost sectors. There's Regional chests, but those aren't really secrets. You just have to find them or switch it up online. They give you a marker on the map to actually find out where it is. Yeah, it's not really a secret then. It tells you where it is. At least to me, it doesn't feel like a secret. So that's, that was a kind of a letdown that there, uh, couldn't find any actually secrets for bosses. But Randall of Vandal will be remembered forever. Like stuff like that. I want like some historical moments in the game. Also, I forgot to, I didn't, should have mentioned this earlier, but uh, I'm not going to be showing any gameplay. I'm just, like I said, I'm just going to be playing this while I'm doing it, so no, nah, really low editing. 
Yet again, I say this, but if you've come for professional content, quality content, this video, then yeah, this you've come to the wrong place. I don't know how many times I've got to say that. But anyway, next one, next moment is going to be all the PvE glitches that happen in the game. In Destiny 2, there's not really a lot of historical PvE glitches. At least ones that make the game more fun and interesting. Only the ones that actually make the game broken, I guess, like uh, the Warcliffe Coil glitch that I don't really use Warcliffe Coil because PvE doesn't feel relevant anymore. I don't play PvE, play in the campaign that I need to level up, so I have to play it. Like all the PvE glitches, I'm going to list a few. One was the loot cave, which dropped extremely ton of loot, which is it wasn't really a glitch. Millions of players were using that, abusing that glitch. So they had to like fix it so you couldn't easily get that loot that quick. Another one was the Ethernet cable glitch for Crota's end and the boss fight. And I actually abused the hell out of that glitch, I'm not gonna lie, because I, I still to this day run Ethernet cable. But I was like the main go-to guy for that glitch. So if you need someone for that glitch, you just come for your boy. AFU Soccer 1, 2, 3. That was my old PSN. Another one I'm gonna mention, the last one, is pushing bosses off in Vault of Glass. And yeah, basically pushing them off the map. You can do this to Etheon, and you can do this to uh, the Warp. What's he called? What's his name? The Templar. Yeah, Templar. I abuse these guys. I'm not gonna lie. Like they're they actually made the game fun. You know, even if it was really easy. I'm I, I don't know why I'm saying this, but it feels like they're trying to make the game more competitive and challenging, but it's just not fun. It's either they take away the fun or they make it way too easy, so it's no skill gap and everything's just for casuals. That's what that's what uh, that's what E2 feels like for Crucible at least. And most of PvE. Anyway, let's go on the next next uh, thing I missed, which was matchmaking sweats PvP. If for those who don't know, I, I was a sweat player, uh, which is basically like a wannabe comp scene, which we were trying to make and build up for actual competitive scene that might have happened in Destiny, which unfortunately didn't, which sucked and disappointed a lot of players. What I mean by matchmaking sweats was that before private matches. The only way we could actually match up for sweats and maybe tournaments, I guess, was that we would try to match up in 3v3. People would just try to queue up together in the party, tell each other when they're matchmaking, and call out how many people are in the lobby so they can back out. And if it were lucky enough, they would match up. And it was really hard, but it was just a good time for sweats, because that was when the true sweat players were actually in the game, in my opinion. I did this back on PS3, which was not good since a lot of the sweat players played on PS3 back then. There was quite a few, but the best players were on PS4 just because the game was better on PS4. There's there's quite a few Xbox players for play sweats, but you know, PS4 was like the main place for tournaments. But you know, that was just a good time, matchmaking. That was when sweats actually felt something. Nowadays, people still play Destiny 1 sweats. There's no Destiny 2 sweats. And even if there was Destiny 2 sweats, it would not feel fun. People still play Destiny 1 sweats. Kind of pointless. I don't, I don't see a reason to why people would play Destiny 1 sweats. People thinking they're so good at the game. None of the good players play anymore. So that's why I stopped playing Destiny 1. It's irrelevant. Just like Destiny 2. Uh, another thing I want to mention is all the significant metas. Uh, I want to talk about Final Round. Uh, final Round, I didn't abuse it. Like, that was for, like, bad snipers. Like, I don't want to be cocky or anything, but, like, I would out snipe almost every single Final Round sniper. Like, it wasn't, like... It was annoying to get killed by Final Rounds, but kill them easy. It wasn't, like, that big of a problem for me. Max Ring Shotguns. Well, it was fun when everything was good. Like, there was no... Like, like, sure, some things were, like, better than others, but, like... Yeah, but it actually, it was, was fun. Terrible. Everything in this game exactly. is terrible. The closest thing to being good in this game was being with these lens. Or they fixed it, because it apparently was glitched. Yeah. Like, in D1, it was the level of really good, and then where all the other guns were, which was good. Now there's just yeah, at least average and terrible. At least guns, like, even though there was, like, it was not that balanced, there's still, like, I could use any gun in that game. And still do decent, yeah. you know? In this just game, just because there's no skill gap, where if you, you need to use the best weapons, and there's only one thing you need to do in this game, it's not like it's challenging. Well, in D1, you could go into Crucible as like a level 2 just trying to level up. Exactly, and you, you wouldn't like, one struggle. Because like I said, there's a skill gap, you know? It's not like it's going to matter. Yeah. I mean, it will matter because they got better stuff than you. But at least it felt fun, it felt fast-paced. In this game, it just feels campy and way too campy. On like a Friday and then just playing for hours on end this Destiny 1 amazing feeling. balancing doesn't necessarily have to take the fun away from it like there's fun women's that were good like Thorn there is Last Word 
There's all these other weapons. And then there is okay weapons that weren't the best. They're under average, I guess. And they're still fun to use. I'm not going to name all of the metas. Definitely a lot more. Some that I missed. Some that I really didn't like. Like, I know one meta where, like, they nerfed. Yeah, fusion rifles was one meta. Like, they were pretty bad. Like, I still use them, though. I could dominate with fusion rifles. It's not like yeah. they were absolutely trash and they couldn't kill anyone. Enough about PvP metas. Now I'm going to talk about armor materials when they were class specific. You remember that? The struggle yeah, the of like Argon getting materials guys. before they the made them Titan. like, yeah, there's like specific for Titan, specific for Warlock, specific for Hunter. And I'm not going to show the gameplay yeah. for it, like I said, because I don't have gameplay. Just because like, I didn't record them and I can't get them now because Destiny will one, get rid of them. Another thing was environmental materials farming. Like people would like spend so much time farming that back in the day. Like back in the day, farming was actually a thing. People would farm. People would farm exotics. They're going to patrol, just regularly yeah. doing regular stuff. It was relevant back then. Now, I I literally like it's either I get I do it if I want to get stuff just farm. Like I'm just gonna get bored to death when I do that, man. The reputation rankings. Remember when we could actually check how much ranking we have for each. Remember when we had like a hundred for the cryptarch. There was leveling for a lot of stuff. Like. In this game, they took away leveling. Like, there's no ranking. It doesn't tell you what rank you are. Back in the day, it did. Yeah, like you were saying, like level having to go into like patrol or something and level up the gun. You couldn't just use moats. Yeah, that's another thing. It was actually worth it because like we had to use the gun and level it up. Nowadays, you just everything's the same. You know, no random perks. You use a weapon and then you switch out the perks. Maybe like with the sights or anything. And then that's it. Another thing is a struggle of leveling. And like leveling factions, that was real bad. Like you only pick one at a time back in the day. Why did Tyra Karn give me a piece of rope? And call, oh, <laughs> just called it a bond. <laughs> the thing was bounties and exotic bounties. Remember, we can get the thorn, you know, bad juju. Like it was actually, it was like a, it's like a quest now, but you didn't have to do all these stupid things. You know, it was something like it felt a lot easier, harder than. What we had to do now like it feels like you know legend of asterisk that thing is like really annoying to do but it felt like that back in the day like the thorn quest you know to do the uh full goth strike but then again it actually felt fun now it's just grinding on it's a waste of time and next we're gonna be going over the cryptarch man the cryptarch dude. biggest villain of destiny one he's still he's still a big villain but like now it doesn't matter anymore you can get it from other stuff anything you want to see about the cryptarch He's a bastard. Let's talk about another guy that we didn't like. Uh, well, we don't like him now. Zer. And Zer, he used to bring actually good stuff, you know? Like, it's not like he would Sometimes you'll bring bad stuff, but you know, his stuff was actually relevant. And that's going to be something you're going to be hearing me say a lot in this video. Uh, but Zer is just irrelevant now. His gear is just pointless. He brings like a lot of the same stuff. Another thing that I missed was reforging. Like I said, random uh, rolled perks. Back then you could reforge your weapon. So like if you didn't like the perks, it was RNG. You can like spend some material and get it reforged. And just grind for that perfect roll. You know, back then there was actually god rolls. Everyone was grind for it. It was actually interesting and fun. A lot of the reactions were like, oh my god, I got the sickest roll ever, oh my god. If you switch up Destiny to Destiny God roll, so many results will come up because so many video there's so many videos on it. But for Destiny 2, if you switch up Destiny 2 God roll, well, what's gonna come up? In fact, I don't even know what you'll find out if you search Destiny 2 God roll. It's probably gonna be Destiny 1 videos. And another thing I really need to say, really important. Exotics were felt exotic back then. Nowadays, look, if I if I go to any exotic in my uh Blueprints, where is it? Right here? My vault? Back in the day, exotics felt something like there's Gal the Horn, there was the Vex, you know, they were unique, if not, if someone were bad, but they actually look unique, you know, there was no Land Beyond, Queenbreaker's Bow is unique, it's not like one weapon on it. I mean, every every linear fusion in this game is Queenbreaker's Bow, but like, uh, there's such a Malice, there's all these unique weapons, and they're all good in their own way. Oh, some of them, maybe some of them weren't good, but like I said, like weapons back in the day, they actually, like, I could use any weapon and still be good with. I mean, don't get me wrong, a lot of these weapons are unique, they don't have the exotic feelings, it's hard to explain. Yeah, like, also, exotics should feel good, like, you shouldn't just put an exotic on, like... I, well, not necessarily good. powerful, but like, they should feel good. People would just use legendaries, like, I assume, because that's what, that's what would do, that's what would get the work done, like... I mean, exotics, what are the best weapons in this game, Mida? That's like the most 
typical weapon you can think of. I mean, Rear Squader feels exotic, but like, that's just a Super Zalo Cell. Zalo Super Cell, my bad. When you think of exotic, you're like, oh wow, this is exotic, you know? You don't think of like a pea shooter. Like, yeah, exactly. You think of something good. Uh, auto rifles, yeah, Monte, Car Monte Carlo did not feel exotic. But it just—it just so—it just felt this had a special place for me, and that was one of my favorite exotics of all time. There are weapons that don't necessarily feel exotic, but they're still favorites, you know. Yeah. That's what makes them exotic. Like you have a special bond with it. In this game, I do not feel a special bond with any single weapon, any single exotic. Legendaries were the best in like Destiny uh, One for a long time, like Ice Luna. But you know, Ice Luna was like a mini. Ha it was a mini, a mini Hawkman. You know, it felt special. In this game, there's literally no point. Like, sure, there's balancing. You know, there's more variety of weapons, but in the end. It's basically the same thing, just reskin. You know, same type of weapon. You're still using the same weapon, even if there is more variety. There is still, you could still have fun in the game. Yeah, prior match is another big one. That's not gonna come out until like later on in the year. Uh, another moment, which I felt a lot, was when you uh, pull off an insane clip, or say like maybe a montage clip, and your friend adrenaline. just gassed you up. Oh wait, what? The adrenaline, adrenaline. Yeah, the adrenaline, man. Yeah. Like it, it was actually intense, and then you pull it off, and your friend's like, "Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit!" I have a bunch of mic clubs, man. I mean, even in trials, you pull up an insane play, like, oh my god, you're a god, you're a god. In this game, it's literally I'm just, yeah. oh my god, I don't even want to describe it. It's gonna be a really shit video, but like, you know, I don't care. I'm just trying to get the feeling back up, all the moments I missed. I mean, I'm gonna make a video on like exotics that I feel like could return, because they are gonna bring back old exotics. They're yeah, gonna bring, well, they've, like, half of the exotics exactly. today are new. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, like I'd actually like to see some new ones sometime today. Um, well, like, I mean, of like, course I we really... like they like. Of course we all want it back, but we don't want to bring it back in the cost of newer exotics. Rumble the playlist. If you're a Destiny like, 2 player, you're like, what the hell is Rumble? What the hell is all these game modes, man? They, like, yeah, if you've never played Destiny. it's something other than 4v4, and there's more game modes. Like at launch, they give us a lot more game modes. Another thing is the replayability. That's a big one. Like strikes, uh, I, I actually had fun in strikes. I mean, they made a strike yeah. out of a mission. We could like replay oh, yeah. a game. Crucible was replayable. It was actually fun to replay it. What are we supposed to do Destiny. now? I'm pretty sure I missed a lot of stuff. So in the comments, please make sure to let me know your moments and anything I missed. This video is not supposed to be hating on Bungie. Not at all. Yeah. This video just it's just kind of something to go with, like down. throwbacks. You know, like what we like what we wanted. You know what like yeah. all the good times we had on Destiny One. You know, what we missed OG yeah. things that. The things that OG yeah. players remember and stuff like that. And, you know? and they need to fix PvP because the they, only time I really they, need they need to fix this whole they I need to fix record. the whole game. Let's be honest. I want to clue this video. So uh, anyway, that's gonna be the video, guys. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Like I said, make sure to comment down below anything I missed, and if I, I feel like it's worthy, I would favor it. And yeah, hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys like these throwbacks and stuff. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace.